This is Texans TV. Today, the Texans take on the Jacksonville Jaguars in North Florida. Both teams are one in six. Texans coming off the bye. They'll have to operate because of COVID reasons without Whitney Merciless, without Dylan Cole, no Jacob Martin as well. And with that comes pass rush. Special teams are going to be affected. So it, it is a, a crisis across the boards in two of three uh, categories of this football team. Empty backfield, first down for the 43 of Houston. Quick throw, left side, Cooks has the first down and more up the sideline. Cooks off to the races, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Rock and roll, touchdown, Houston. 57 yards on the catch and run by Cooks. We may have some fireworks in this one today. Whoa. First and goal inside the two. Here's Duke to the goal line. He's in, touchdown, Houston. Duke Johnson with the short yardage run as the Texans score in the two-minute drill before the break. They forced him to throw the ball faster than he really wanted to, and he left it hanging up. On third and six from the Houston 23. Here's the snap, here's the throw to Fuller, and he's got it at the 50, Fuller on the run. 40, 30, 20, 10, five, touchdown, Will Fuller. Will Fuller's skills as a receiver have improved so much to be able to just Agreed. on the fly and make that catch. That's just phenomenal. I threw it up, he made a great catch, and after that, he did the rest. So uh, with guys like that, they can really run. Um, you just give him a chance to get the ball in their hands and let him go to work. Third down and four for the Jacks, 22. Luton steps up, and Watt knocks the ball out. J.J. Watt, strip sack, recovered by the Jags, but that's it, 100 for J.J. Watt, 35th player in NFL history with 100 sacks. An historic moment for J.J. Watt. He's the fourth player in NFL history to record 100 sacks in 120 games or less. This is the ultimate team game, so it's all my teammates, you know, linebackers and DBs covering, d linemen helping push a pocket, you know, offense putting teams in tough situations where you get to rush the passer in the fourth quarter. All, all that stuff comes together. All the people behind the scenes helping you out. So it's me who got to the 100 today. There's a whole lot of people who had a hand in that. So I'm thankful to all them. And the Texans will get their second win of the season, knocking off Jacksonville 27-25 on the road with Cleveland up next. Welcome into Texans 360. That was a great win, wasn't it? The Texans moved to 2-0 on the Jags, and they're done with them for 2020, at least the regular season. It was a fun win. J.J. Watt hit 100 sacks for his career. You're going to see more on that later on in the show. The Texans head to Cleveland for another big matchup against Baker Mayfield and company. We'll have more on that as well. But first... Let's enter the deep slant, sit down with the player and get to know him a little better. This week on the Xfinity one-on-one -on -one deep slant, we've got one of our favorites, Justin Reed, safeties entering year three. And Justin, before I ask you any questions, we talked to Eric Murray the other day and we asked him about all these Zoom calls and these Zoom meetings that you guys are having. Uh, who's the most disruptive on Zoom? Who's always got the dog barking or the kids crying? Or the most the disruptive noise? in the Zoom calls? Yeah. Man, that's a good question. It's it probably going to be AJ Moore or Key, Keon Crossing. One of the two, man, the, the dynamic tandem, man, in the special teams. <laughs> but they're going to be one of those guys for sure. Guys are characters. All right, let's talk about you. How's year three going for you? Obviously, it's not the season anyone expected. But mm -hmm. for you personally, you've had some big plays this year. You blocked a field goal against the Titans. You had that big fourth down stop against Jacksonville. Tell me how it's been going for you so far. I feel like I made a couple of plays. I feel like I've grown a lot in the three years being here on the middle side of the game. Just understanding professional football, how offenses generically work, especially getting to know our division rivals and what their strengths and weaknesses are. We're all not exactly happy about where we are right now. You know, we still have a lot to fight for this season, 
and still a ways to go. Still got a bunch of games to play, including an exciting one this week against Cleveland. So just still chopping away at it, seeing that ways we can get better. Um, me challenging myself, ways that I can be better. One of the ways that I feel like, aside from my own play, that I've really grown this year is just the leadership and being in the room and trying to raise the level of play of the guys around me and be that voice and you know help teach them the way that I was taught um, by the vets my rookie year and Kareem and Tyron and Jonathan Joseph um, and be that guy for the new guys coming in. I've seen you a lot out and about in the community. You talk about being a good communicator. I know things are different this year. Everything's virtual, but um, you have made some appearances. You've talked to some local high schools. You've been really passionate about getting out the vote and social justice initiatives. Uh, what part of that aspect do you like so much? What, what are some of the, your messages been to the youth around Houston? Yeah, well, whenever I was a kid, I had a bunch of role models and idols that I looked up to in the athletic world. Um, and now I'm on the other side of that. And it's really cool. And, and I take that responsibility seriously, you know, still get back and be that guy that wouldn't talk to a high school team because that's something that those young men are never going to forget. You know what I mean? And I'm able to just affect a couple of them and, you know, inspire them to be better or to put in better effort and, or maybe even inspire them to grow up one day and do the same thing what I did for them, for them to do for the next generation after them. You know, that's what I really seek to do. So it's always been a big um, initiative of mine. I want to be out and be active in the community and make a difference. And that's what I intend to keep doing. Well, we always have fun catching up with you, Justin. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Justin Reed and the Deep Plant 101. Thanks so much, Thank Justin. You. That is definitely one of my favorite parts of this job, other than game day, catching up with a player every single week. You can catch that interview and all the rest of them up on HoustonTexans.com. Do you know what else I love? I love numbers. Who doesn't love numbers? Let's do it. Let's go FedEx by the numbers right now. Six. Will Fuller V has caught a touchdown pass now in a franchise record six consecutive games. His 77-yarder last weekend at Jacksonville was part of a five-catch, 100-yard day in the win over the Jags. He's also averaging a career-best 16.4 yards per catch. 34. Defensive end J.J. Watt is now tied for 34th all-time on the NFL's career sacks leaderboard, sharing the spot with Patriots Hall of Famer Andre Tippett. When Watt records his 101st career sack, he'll move past Cameron Wake, Hall of Famer Charles Haley, and former Houston Oiler great William Fuller. Four, number four to Sean Watson, has the fourth most passing touchdowns by an NFL quarterback in their first 46 career games. Since entering the league in 2017, he's tossed for 88 scores. I'm Drew Doherty, and this is By the Numbers, presented by FedEx. Coming up, John Harris has your performance report. That's next on Texas 360. Welcome back to Texans 360. The Texans are on the road once again on Sunday against the Cleveland Browns. But you know what? You can still get tickets for their next home game against the New England Patriots. Just go to Ticketmaster.com slash Texans. All right, this week, Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield. The last time these two teams faced each other, he was just a rookie. He's grown a lot. And you know what? There's a lot to look into with this Browns team. So we turn it to our very own John Harris with this week's Harris Hurry Up. It's time for the performance report brought to you by Hyundai. Week 10, Go on the road again to Cleveland to take on a 5-3 Cleveland Browns team that has shown a ton of progress in the two years since the Texans took them on here at NRG Stadium. They're led by Baker Mayfield at quarterback. Now, Baker's been in the COVID-19 protocol, but it looks like he's going to be ready to go for this game against the Houston Texans. That game in 18 that Mayfield started in his rookie year is kind of the reputation that's followed him. The first half, he threw us three interceptions. The second half, he threw for 341 passing yards against that 2018 defense. That's kind of been his career, up and down, up and down. The last two games have been the same way. He lit up the Bengals with five touchdowns. Against the Raiders, he threw for only 122 yards. So Baker's been up and down, but what's been up all the way up is that Browns running game. They rebuilt the offensive line, putting Jedrick Wills, the first round draft pick, a left tackle, and Jack Conklin, the free agent that we know very well, having played with the Tennessee Titans at right tackle. They instituted that zone running game that was famous here with Gary Kubiak under Kevin Stefanski. And they're averaging over 150 yards per game. But 
Some of that has been with Nick Chubb. Now, Chubb should be available for the Browns on Sunday, as will Kareem Hunt. That one-two combination has given teams a lot of trouble when those two are in the lineup together. That's where the Texans' run defense has to come up big. No OBJ, but Jarvis Landry at wide receiver and Harrison Bryant. Keep an eye on the rookie tight end from FAU has been a big weapon in the Cleveland Browns offense. Defensively, it's pretty clear. They've got two superstars, one on the edge, Miles Garrett, one in the secondary, and that's Denzel Ward. Garrett is on a defensive MVP pace, nine sacks through eight games, on pace for 18 sacks this year. That obviously would be a career high for him. He has been magnificent. So the Texans have to find a way to block Miles Garrett on the edge. And then when Deshaun Watson throws the ball, he's got to make sure that Denzel Ward is not in the area to make a play on it. The third year star has done nothing but make plays for that Cleveland Browns defense. Now, outside of those two, there's an opportunity for the Texans offense to maybe have some success. Been banged up a little bit at the linebacker position. And I think the front is good, not great, next to Miles Garrett. The Watson and the offense can get going with a little bit of balance. I think it's going to be tough for Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward to get enough help to stop them. Should be a fun one. Hopefully, it comes up a Texans win in Week 10. Love seeing analysis from John Harris every single week. And you know what? I had a chance to catch up with Cleveland Browns radio host Nathan Zagura for an inside look on the Browns from the opposing side. Take a look at this week's Enemy Sidelines. Nathan, welcome. And it's been a few years since we spoke, but uh, here the Browns are, 5-3 and three, heading into Week 10. I imagine the mood in Cleveland's got to be quite good these days. Yeah, absolutely. We're off to a good start. First of all, it's great to talk with you again. And The last time the Texans and the Browns played each other Baker Mayfield was just a mere rookie and here he is in in year three he's undergone gone all those coaching changes like you said where have you seen the most growth from him this year well so far it's just taking care of the football you know 15 touchdowns seven interceptions so better than a two to one touchdown to interception ratio uh, that was a big problem last year as he threw more than 20 interceptions that has been I would say the biggest part of his growth and he's in an offense that's going to stress you know what he does well, play action, the play action bootlegs, getting him out of the pocket. He's been very effective on those types of plays. And, you know, while some people would say the Browns have been certainly a run first team, and that would be true in the one game where he had to do it through the air. He turned in his best performance against Cincinnati in a duel, a shootout with Joe Burrow. At one point, he completed 21 straight passes, which was a Browns franchise record. Yes, what this team is, what's its identity? It's running the football. When Nick Chubb went out after week four, Browns were the number one rushing offense in the NFL. They have not been since he has been out. And getting that one-two punch is huge because if the Browns get a lead, what they were doing is they would wear you down with Nick Chubb. And then the fourth quarter, Kareem Hunt would come in fresh. And it was almost unfair. You know, there were a couple of games where he averaged eight yards a carry in the fourth quarter because he came in fresh and was just running all over defenses that were worn out. So the Browns are going to be able to get back to that. And that's something that's been missing. Our next-gen stat presented by AWS has Miles Garrett tied for a sack leader in the NFL. He's got nine along with Aaron Donald. So what about that Browns front? It is, it's pretty hard to stop. It's a very good front. They had been a very good run defense all year, but Miles is, is all world. I mean, Miles is making a case, I think for MVP, not just defensive player of the year, nine sacks that you mentioned, four sack fumbles. He's already had four turnovers on sack strip fumbles and the Browns are four and in those games. Good luck to you, but this is the year we need this one. So you've had your good run. Browns need to get this one on Sunday. Thanks for the time, Nathan. You got it. JJ Watt's 100th career sack was cause for congratulations. That's coming up next on Texans 360. Texans 360 rolls on and JJ Watt is rolling along in year 10. He hit 100 career sacks on Sunday against Jacksonville and a lot of famous faces Family, friends, and whatnot, they joined in to congratulate number 99 on number 100. Congratulations, J.D., on your 100 sack. Still remember that first one, Drew Brees, New Orleans. Very cool. It's hard to believe that it's been nine years and 99 sacks later, so it's pretty crazy. Congratulations, you earned it. Congratulations, J.J. We're so proud of you. We love you, and uh, with every sack, we love your celebrations and are so excited. Congratulations. Congratulations on 100 sacks, J.J. You are incredible, and 
I am so thankful to get to watch you work so hard every single day. You make me want to be the best athlete and human I can possibly be. And that's what's special about you is you make everyone around you want to be better. And I am so thankful and proud to be your wife. And I love you so much. Congratulations. Jay, I'm back where it all started, man. Congratulations on 100 sacks. It's hard to believe that starting from here and going to where you're at now, we're celebrating this amongst all the other things that you've done. Couldn't be prouder of you. And uh, keep doing what you do. And God bless. JJ, what's up, man? Drew Brees, hey, just wanted to congratulate you on your 100th sack. Man, it's phenomenal. Um, I guess I should feel honored to be the first of those sacks. Um, <laughs> and probably many more after that. In fact, funny story, I don't know if I ever told you this, but we played you guys in maybe 2015 and uh, you had a couple sacks on me. You were mic'd up for that game um, and pretty vocal during all that. I like Drew, I don't like hitting him like that. But, um, so I get home that day, you guys whooped us pretty good. And I walk in the door and it's one of those things where, man, I'm gonna see my kids and kind of brighten my day. And the minute I walk in the door, my sons go, dad, play football with us. So I'm like, all right, you know, perfect. Just wanna spend time with you guys. And they're like, all right, you be yourself and we're gonna be JJ Watt. And so we're just gonna sack you. And that's basically the way my night went, man. I thought I had escaped you um, by leaving Houston, but I show up at home and all my kids wanna do is sack me like JJ Watt did. So anyway, man, congrats, you're the best. You soon. Hey, JJ, <laughs> congratulations. Coach Wade, man, 100. That's awesome, man. I'm so proud of you. So proud for you. I know your mom and dad are, are really just elated, and everybody should be. You know, I'll never forget the interception you had against Cincinnati that won that playoff game for us. Uh, so keep getting those interceptions too. But uh, good luck to you, buddy, and uh, congratulations again. Hey JJ, it's your friend Will. Um, congrats on 100 sacks. That's a really big deal and I'm happy for you and thank you for being my friend. Peace out, man. Hey brother, it's your boy Justin and I wanna say congratulations on the 100 sack and I also wanna say thank you for being the biggest role model. Thanks for the encouraging words and just thank you and I love you. Hey JJ, I just wanted to congratulate you on getting 100 sacks. I also want to thank you for what an impact you've had on me. I remember going to the NRG Stadium and meeting you and being so nervous that the only question I could ask you was where do you get your shoes? The only reason I asked was because me and JJ are around the same size. So when next day comes, it's game day. Uh, I see JJ on the field and he's carrying a small duffel bag. And he, he finds me, he walks up to me and he puts a duffel bag on the ground he opens it, and there are around seven or eight different pairs of shoes in there, and he says to me, they're all brand new pairs I've never worn. If you want them, they're yours. I know this might have been insignificant to you, but to me, it meant a lot. So thank you, and congratulations again on getting 100 sacks. JJ 100. Go, go, JJ. Congratulations, JJ. Congratulations, JJ. What's up, JJ? Congratulations on doing 100 sacks. Go JJ Woohoo! Congratulations JJ Y! Hey JJ, it's your girl Alatrius from the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and you're one of my favorites. And I just wanted to say congratulations on the 100. For you JJ! Thank you! Hey JJ Y, my name is Ezekiel Rivera from the Warden Boys and Girls Club. Congrats on your 100 tackle. Let's go, Tensons. Hi, JJ Watson from Shark from the Boys and Girls Club. Congratulations on your 100 set, and you did it. JJ, you have 100. Go, JJ. 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 Next, Texans rookies go virtual with some Houston teens. That's coming up on Texans 360. It's our final segment of Texans 360. We always go out and about in the community and show you what these Houston Texans are up to. They're not quite out and about in the community the way they have been in years past, obviously because of COVID concerns and social distancing, but you know what? 
This year's rookie class still got to make an impact. They did it via Zoom actually this week with some local Houston teens. Check it out. So we're here at the Houston, Texas Teen Club, and we're here for the uh, the rookie Columbine. So some of the rookies for the Houston Texans football team got a chance to mentor some of our uh, teens here that are participating in our 2021 Youth of the Year. They get to build relationships with them. Uh, the football players get a chance to get to know our teens and kind of give them some guidance and support. Like, you just got to believe in what you can do, you know what I'm saying? So like with me, I'm like, man, I know I can pass it. So like, I filled it three times. But I was I'm talking with Reggie from the Houston Texans Teen Club just kind of about his plan going forward and a bunch of things he's interested in, his hobbies, you know, just kind of getting to know him better. We had a lot in common as far as when I was his age, but I think he got a lot of things, things really planned out well for us, so I'm kind of looking forward to see how it goes for him. How long did it take you to learn how to play the saxophone? Are you originally from Houston? Is there anything that I should check out around the area? These events are special because most kids don't get this opportunity and you being picked out and you hearing your name and like somebody who's like, Hiding you that that's where you could be says your name is it gives it gives you that little tingly feeling in your heart like you matter and that you're important. A super thank you to the Houston Texans and everything that they do for the organization and the Houston Texas Teen Club. Uh, our teens do love this and we uh, are looking forward to continue to doing this. Love seeing our Houston Texans rookies go out and about in the community and get to know the Houston area a little bit better. And I love having you on the show every week. This this 30 minutes just flies by, doesn't it? That's going to be the case every single week as we bring you more and more great 360 content. But you know what? That's going to do it for this week. So thank you so much for watching and everyone that worked on this show, Tyler Sudarth, uh, Mark Vandermeer, Drew Doherty, everyone else that contributed, John Harris. For all of you out there in Houston, stay safe and go Texas.